So this is basically gonna be a video breaking down some free response questions from the 2018 AP Calculus AB exam. This will be the released questions. Um, this video is just gonna be starting with number one. I will release other videos for the remaining problems as well. So here we go, here's number one. All right, so number one starts off, it says people enter a line. Okay, so it's entering a line for an escalator at a rate. So basically, and it's modeled by the function r. So this function right here, r, is based on an entering rate, or it's equal to the entering rate. So I'm gonna kind of write that down here because that's pretty important. So this right here is a rate. So we're gonna, I'm gonna put a little arrow here, and it's the rate of people entering. Okay, I'm assuming there's gonna eventually talk about a rate of people leaving and that's gonna be negative. So we're gonna to try to think about this rate as being a positive rate um, where people are increasing. It's based on this piecewise function here from zero to 300. If it's greater than 300, then nobody's entering. So that's basically what this is saying if you translated it. Now, it is easy to get kind of bogged down with how crazy this function is right here, this, this top part of the piecewise. Try not to get intimidated by that. What AP tends to do anytime it's a calculator problem, they give you a crazy function. So you're not actually expected to do any like calculus by hand with this, you're, but you are expected to use technology and understand how to do that problem using a calculator. So try not to get intimidated by this for right now. Okay, and then it says where R of T is measured in people per second. So I'm actually gonna highlight that really quick. It says it's measured in people per second. Okay, that's the units that we're gonna use. So that's gonna be important. So um, I'm gonna kind of just put an arrow here. Again, so it's entering, it's a rate, it's people per second, just because usually that those units come in handy. And the T is measured in seconds. Okay, that usually, usually it matches. It's per second to the T is measured in seconds, but it is still good to, to kind of see that. As people get on the escalator, they exit. Okay, so we talked about this just a second ago of the entering rate here. This is going to be the exit rate. So right here, it's gonna be an exiting at 0.7 people per second. So we're gonna to try to think about it as negative because they're leaving. I'm just assuming that we're gonna be using this. Actually, I haven't read this problem yet. Okay, now if you keep going, it says there are 20 people in the line initially at T equals zero. So I'm actually write so I'm gonna write initially right here really quick, just because usually it, you end up using that sometime um, during the problem. All right, so let's start with A. It says, how many people, okay, emphasis here is on people. It's not a rate, it's an amount. Enter the line for an escalator and the time interval zero to 300. Okay, now it says how many people, so that's a sign that we're gonna need an integral. So what I'm gonna do for this, I'm gonna kind of move this down here. What I'm gonna do for this is set up my integral, and usually you do get points for that in the scoring. So for A, right, A right here, we are gonna set up an integral and it's going from zero to 300. So it kind of tells us what to put in the integral for the A and B, the limits of the integral. And then it says, how many people? So that means we need, and it's how many people are entering. So I should have underlined that as well. How many people are entering? So we need the entering rate to figure out the number of people entering. So we're gonna be looking at this entering rate that's right here, this R of T. So what I'm gonna do, uh, and you, you're allowed to do this, you'll still get points for it, is I'm just gonna write R of T. DT. Okay, you don't actually have to write this entire thing right here. We're only using this piece because it says 0, 0300 here, um, but we're only using that first piece right there. So I'm not actually going to write that down, but I am going to write it in my calculator. So basically what you're going to be doing is using Math 9 in your calculator, and I'm going to show you a little uh, graphic that basically what you're going to have to put in your calculator um, to make this work. So basically with this problem, I'm going to put the equation that entering rate equation into the y sub one. So that's what I'm doing right now. It's important to do that because it's going to shortcut you having to plug all of this in. As you can see what I'm plugging in right now, it's taking a little bit of time. It's a lot faster if you just plug it into the y one and then you just use the y one variable each time you want to access this entering equation. So once I do that, I'm gonna quit out of this and go back to the regular screen. And then I'm gonna use math nine. So I'm gonna hit math nine and then go from zero to 300 and then I want that entering rate so I'm just gonna put in my Y1. So you hit bars and then go over to, then you hit Y1 and then we're doing it with respect to X so you have to have DX at the end of it. Hit enter and you get this 270 as we have right here. So that's basically how to do this first part in your calculator. So once you put that in your calculator you will get 270 people. That says how many people but 
doesn't hurt to put the unit. Okay, so it is important to have that integral, even if you did it in your calculator, you still have to show what you would actually do, and then we have that 270 people as the answer here. But you will get points also for showing work, so make sure you actually write down what you did in your calculator. You don't actually have to, again, write that full expression right here. You could just put R of T, and that will totally work. All right, now we're looking at B. It says, during the time interval 0 300, there are always people in line for the escalator. How many people are in line at time 300? Okay, so it says there's always people in line for the escalator. Now, what's important with this one is it says there are always people in line. How many people are in line? Okay, it doesn't say how many people are entering. If you notice in A, it says people enter. So you use that entering rate. This one just says how many people. So basically, you're going to have to use all of the information that's given initially in the problem. So we're going to need the entering rate. We're going to need the exiting rate. And we're also going to need the amount of people that were in there initially. So your expressions should look something like this. For B, you're going to have, so how many people are in line at 300? So we're basically going to be having the 20 that are initial, and then we're going to be adding up the, uh, the 0 to 300, basically from the people that are entering. So I'm going to put the entering rate in here. And then I'm going to be subtracting off that exiting rate. Now the exiting rate was just that 0.7 pe persons per second, so it's a constant rate. So I'm actually just going to put the rate in 0.7 like that. And then in D, T, it's all with respect to time. Okay, now from here, I'm just going to throw the entire thing in my calculator. There's no sense in doing any of this by hand, and you should get the following. All right, so to do this part, we're just going to be doing 20, because that's how many people were in there initially, plus now we are going to be using the entering rate, but we're going to take the integral of it so we actually find the amount rather than the rate. So we're going to hit math 9, and then we're going to go from 0 to 300, now, I do not have to put that expression in all the way because I can just use my Y1 like I did previously. So I'm going to hit VARS, arrow over to Y VARS, function, and then hit Y1. And then I need to subtract off the exiting rate. So that's what I'm going to do right here. Now, it's important to understand that the integral of both of these rates is going to turn it into the amount that's accumulated from 0 to 300. So you don't have to worry about doing this by hand. The calculator will do it all for you. As long as we have the rates in there, it'll do the integral for us. And then we're doing this with respect to x. And then you hit enter, and you end up with 80. OK, so when you do that, you end up getting 80 people. OK, it is important, again, to make sure you show all the work. Don't just throw it in your calculator and assume that you're not going to get points for that. They don't care about just the answer. You do get points for the answer, but you are expected to have that integral as well. So make sure you include that in there. OK, on to number C, letter C. It says, for t greater than 300, what is the first time t that there is no people in the line for the escalator? Okay, a t, t greater than 300. So let's go back to our entering rate up here. At the entering rate, t greater than 300, there's nobody entering. But there are still people exiting. So it says right here, exit line is a constant 0.7 people per second. You're going to be using that 0.7 people per second rate of exiting to figure out how what, at what time the people that were exactly at 300 are basically going to be diminished away from that constantly taking away 0.7 people per second. So basically to figure that out, you need to take this 80 people that we have right here. So you have 80 people and we're going to be dividing it by that rate of exiting so it's going to be people per second okay so these the people here actually the units are going to cancel here and you're going to end up with the time that it took for those 80 people to exit so if you throw that in your calculator you end up with uh, 114.285714 uh, Okay, so that's how many seconds it took for those 80 people to exit. However, you also have to add in all the 300 seconds that were leading up to those 80 people. So from here, you still need to add another 300 to this, and you end up with 414.286 seconds. So basically, that's the total time that it took for everyone that was in line to basically empty the line. So 414.286 seconds. There's not really a lot of calculus in that one, but there is still a lot of understanding of how rates work as well as keeping track of the time. All right, so for part D, it says for time 0 to 300, at what time T is the number of people in line a minimum? 
Okay, so right when I see minimum, a light bulb goes off my head. I'm thinking, I need the first derivative, or I need like that first rate anyway. To the nearest whole number, find the number of people in line at this time. So not only do we have to figure out the time at which their minimum occurs, we're also expected to find the number of people that actually occur at that time. So it's kind of a multifaceted problem. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we need that first derivative, or we need at least that rate. So let me see here. Let me write it right here. So it says D here. Okay, I'm just going to go right here. Okay, so for D, basically we are going to be looking at that rate of entering, which is R of T, uh, minus the rate of exiting, which is the 0.7, and we're going to be setting this equal to zero to find that critical number. Now, you could set it to undefined, but this is the real world, so you're not going to be worried about um, setting the, uh, to find the critical number where it's undefined. We just need to set the, the rate minus 0.7 equal to zero. Now, to solve for this, because if you remember, this piece up here is kind of crazy. It's easier just to throw the whole thing in your calculator and figure out that T. So that's actually what I'm going to do here. All right, so I'm going to use my calculator to find those critical numbers. First thing I'm going to do is go to my y equals, and I already have that first equation in there. What I'm going to do is just subtract off that 0 0.7. So I'm going to go to the end here. It might take me a little bit to go to the end. Come on. Okay, and then I'm going to subtract off 0 0.7. And I'm trying to find where y1 is equal to 0, so where that intersects. So I'm actually going to just graph 0 here. Um, it is important to note that the this function goes from 0 to 300. That's the, that's the range that we're looking at, or that's the domain that we're looking at. So I'm going to go to window, and I'm going to change my x min to 0. I'm going to change my x max to 300 and then I'm going to hit zoom zero so that way it fits that function onto the screen as well as the y equals zero. So right away we can see there's a critical number there and there's a critical number there. So from here you should be able to see that this rate is going from negative to positive. So this is the only one that we really need to worry about just because that's going to be a relative min. It could also be our absolute min. Uh, over here, it's going from positive to negative, so that means it's a relative max. The sign is going from positive to negative, so it's a relative max. So we really don't need to worry about that. I'm actually going to bypass all that and write both of the critical numbers out and test every one of the critical numbers just to see which one is the absolute min. Uh, so I'm actually ignoring that, but just so you know, you could think of it that way if you want it. All right, so find this intersection point. We're going to find this first one right here. We're going to hit second, trace and then five, the fifth choice is intersect, so I'm gonna hit enter on that, and then it says first curve, cool, we're gonna do the blue, the second curve is the red, so I'm gonna hit enter on that. Now I want this intersection over here, so I'm actually gonna just move my cursor so it's a little bit closer to that one. As long as it's closer to this intersection, it won't pick this one up, and then I'm gonna hit enter when it says guess, and then there's my first intersection, so I'm gonna write that down as the first critical number, and then I'm gonna do the same thing over here really quick to get that intersection. Okay, move my guess over, so as long as it's closer to this one, it'll find it, hit enter, and then we have the other critical number. So from there, we are going to test each of those numbers as well as the, in, the end points to figure out which one is the absolute min. All right, so we have our two critical numbers here, and basically what we need to do is figure out the total amount of people that happen at these two times, as well as the zero and the 300, okay? So we have to also test those endpoints. Now to be able to figure out the amount of people at this 33, this 166, the zero and the 300, we do need an expression or a model that basically tells us the total amount of people at any time. We're gonna use what we did in part B to kind of figure out that amount. So it's basically going to be 20, plus zero to whatever our time is up here. So, so let's actually just put T up there. Um, and then we're gonna have that rate uh, subtracted from 0.7. Uh, and this is going to be in terms of x here. Okay, so we should basically be able to put in all of our t values, this 33, the 166, the 0, and the 35, basically to this equation. So I'm actually going to call this equation big T of small t. And this is basically just going to represent the total amount of people at any given time. Okay, so we're just going to plug all of these values into our calculator, and you should end up with the following. All right, so at t of 0, pretty easy. You have 0 to 0, so this ends up just being 0, so it's, you can just end up with 20. 
Okay, the next one in line is going to be that 33.013298. Okay, if you plug that in your calculator, you should get about 3.803 people. So far, that's our min. Okay, if you plug in the 166, 0.57472, you will get 100, about 158.070. I should be rounding these two because it does say, it does say to the nearest whole number, but that's okay. And last but not least, we have the 0 to 300. And the 0 to 300, if you plug zero, 300 in here, we should already know what we get because we did this before. You should get 80 people. So the min would be this one right here, and if we round it, it's gonna end up being four. Okay, so it says, so the nearest whole number, find the number of people in line at this time, it's gonna be four, and the time is going to be this 33 here. So I'm basically gonna be highlighting the answers really quick because I kinda of ran out of room here. That's basically the time here, and then that's the number of people if you actually round. Um, the justification of your answers is all the work, so do make sure you show all the work. So that's basically how to do number one on the 2018 released AP Calculus AB exam for the free response. If you have any questions about anything in this video, let me know.